Hello my friends and welcome to my studio, Open Studio D. I'm Vlad Duchev and today we're going to talk about equipment for uh, painting in gouache or gouache equipment. Uh, we're going to talk about the actual equipment. I actually ordered uh, the whole set just to show you and it's still actually packed. Some, some pieces are still packed. So I'll show you uh, all the equipment. Uh, we'll talk about why to paint in gouache and how to paint in gouache all right so this will be a gouache lesson let's get started Here we go. so this uh, portion uh, of the content will be very very short for those people who don't have time to watch you know whole thing so I'm going to show you what uh, gouache equipment consists of, right? So the first one will be collapsible cup. Uh, why it's called collapsible? Because it's collapsible. You just push it out. This is the cup you have. You push it in and uh, you can put the water. When you collapse it, you can put the water and just clean your brushes and blah, blah, blah. You can squeeze it like this, click and put it in the back and you, you're ready to go. All right, so this is number one. Uh, that's the number one for your studio. Uh, this is by Richardson. Jack Richardson and the company. I'm just looking at my cheat sheet. So really fast, uh, you just put water inside uh, and there is uh, some things that you can rub the brushes and clean and this is for your studio, brush cleaner for the studio. Uh, also, this is the um, palette. It's called Fusion 18. So it has 18 wells right here, 18 wells. This is where you keep your you know, paint right here and where you mix your colors. Uh, plastic palette highly recommend next one will be a paper so the paper is arches 300 pounds very heavy paper for gouache uh, very recommend you can use 140 100 or 300 pounds and I'll explain you why later on on another part which is for people who wants to watch longer all right next one is the how to tape the uh, uh, arches paper on a canvas you can use any canvas you can use a paper like this this is the white paper called pro artist pro white tape this is three quarter I have all so you just take your paper and tape it to your canvas and paint in gouache all right something like this I have in my bag so this is a tape now the colors let me switch my camera this is the colors that you can use I have 12 colors from blue to white this is two whites two yellows, two greens, uh, one orange, uh, two reds, and three blues. Ultramarine, cobalt blue, uh, this is uh, blue uh, turquoise, I cannot pronounce that right, Elizabeth Crimson, uh, flame red, orange, green, cat green, this is um, permanent green light, uh, ochre, or actually not, this is not ochre, this is uh, Naples yellow, uh, Naples yellow, uh, lemon yellow and gray number two and two whites. So this is my colors about the brushes. You can use any brushes, synthetic, soft synthetic brushes, anything you want, round, square, filbert, uh, whatever you want, angler, whatever you want, feel comfortable, uh, you know, painting with on gouache. All right. So this is episode for people who wants to watch like in five minutes on formation of 45 minutes. Enjoy it. I hope you enjoy that. And next episode will be for the people or next part will be for people who wants to slow down and listen carefully and get full information about equipment, uh, gouache equipment, what to have if you want to start painting gouache. All right. So let's go to part number two. All right, as I mentioned, I ordered a gouache set, uh, just brand new set. Um, and uh, just before we jump on the actual equipment, let me give you the little bit of the history of gouache. So gouache is a water base medium, uh, but a little bit heavier on um, actual on the paint, the, the viscosity of the paint. Uh, dries uh, very fast. Uh, it will depends how you will dilute it with the water, but it's diluted by just the water. Dry fast, you can put next uh, layer of gouache uh, on top of gouache, or you can if you you know wet your brush and uh, 
kind of melt or what we call lifting the color previous coat so you can basically you can merge two colors together mix it like you, like if you take oil uh, one color another color and mix together even if it's dry it's reactivated by water uh, which is really cool like a you know uh, uh, watercolor you can act reactivate but it's really hard because you will be damaging the uh, the uh, paper gouache is really uh, easy um, kind of easy going medium it's very very easy to reactivate even on your palette i was just reactivating painting and then it will dry you can reactivate and reactivation done by pure water all right another history of gouache if you look uh, this is how i study gouache back in you know art school uh, you start with uh, drawing first then you go with like you know when i went through um uh, color pencil pencils um, then you go to watercolor then after watercolor you go to gouache and then after gouache you can go to oil you cannot skip gouache before you go into the oil so gouache is very very uh, common uh, medium in uh, in art school in uh, Europe uh, so people don't jump to oil uh, oil painting right away they go through stages of you know just kind of preparing yourself for oil all right so that's a little bit of a history um, so the reason why you know I want to introduce gouache because it's very very um, cool and easygoing medium for study work for example if you go if you would like to uh, if you studio paint, painter you need to go paint outside anyway now we can paint outside on plein air uh, with oil nothing wrong that's what I do all the time but you can all, all uh, also you can go uh, to paint in plain air study work in gouache uh, first it's very safe because you, you didn't have to have turp or mediums or all this you know gizmo for oil all you have to have just the uh, water your set and mm, paper that's it dries really fast especially if you're painting outside with hot weather and, and breeze or wind going it's gonna dry fast you will need to have the spray which i forgot to order um so it's fast you can do three four five sometimes you know six uh, uh studies dry really fast you, you know you can st do one study put your paper uh right next to you in 15 minutes it will be completely done completely dry you didn't have to be worried about oh carrying the you know oil like oil uh, canvas in the car and make sure it's not touching anything it's just done you can put it back in you know in your folder or whatever stock them easy easy peasy uh, and then what is cool you can bring this study work back into your studio and actually paint big bigger pieces from three four studies that you do in gouache you can do the same thing in in uh, oil absolutely I'm saying that gouache is much much faster much much safer uh, because you know it's just safe for your car for your clothes for you for your hands for your skin and for everything else uh, fast safer and uh, um, you can do more studies uh, that's it and um, the uh, you may ask well, if you're good to do gouache can they do can you transfer it to oil absolutely you can transfer to oil anything you know you can transfer pencil or color pencils so you can you can transfer watercolors to oil it really doesn't matter it's it's a matter of how you study uh, and what you use for study so lately i am start using gouache uh, really really heavier i uh, just enjoying it because it just reminded me you know my youth when i was studying and just the smell and everything else is just cool uh, all right so let's less less talking and more showing right there is another expression but i will stick with this one so keep in mind we keep supporting uh keep going supporting ukraine uh on your donation on coffee purchasing my paintings i have 50 percent off i sold a lot of paintings i still have i'm loading and i have another probably like 50 paintings on my computer that i have to you know I work on digitize and uh, put on my website please support and i thank you very much for those who purchased my paintings all the money going to ukraine uh actually today i got two checks um and gave to people uh, 
to transfer to uh, Ukraine directly to people who are actually working on the field, on the ground, uh, helping people, the refugees and actually people who are actually in staying inside, like in Mariupol, uh, which is wiped out completely, and Kharkiv and Kiev and other other cities. All right, so equipment, uh, equipment for gouache. So I'm gonna start with uh, probably a brush cleaner. So this is one of the brush cleaner that I recommend, recommend uh, Faber-Castell, Faber -Castell, I don't know how to pronounce it right. So this is collapsible, or they call it clip, to go uh, clip to go cup uh, comes like this so when you open it it's this is a cup and it's very easy it's collapsible so it's easy to clean easy to carry in your bag when you travel so what you need to do just push it inside it will pop up so basically it's a click and go all right so you just put the water inside if you have a bottle of water put the you know, water inside set on your easel you can uh, clean your brushes when you're done all you have to do just clean it click and go and that's what they say click and go right here if you don't trust me click and go <laughs> all right so this is i don't need this anymore so this is the cup so the first item will be collapsible cup for your water that's number one the next one, this is more for studio. If you want to paint in studio, uh, you can use anything, basically. You can use any containers from your shopping when you're done shopping, getting some food. But I like this because uh, this is the, um, where's the label? It's, it's by uh, Jack Richardson and company called Brush Besson. Um, it's right here. Brush Besson comes, this is actually the Besson or cleaner. Uh, comes with a, you know, with the lead. Yeah, when you take a lead out, you have, first of all, you have holes for your brushes, so you can put brushes inside, which I never do, or never done. You know, something like this. But the problem is, if it sits on the table, so your brush will be like this. It's, you know, it's, it's not wobbling a lot, so you can put a lot of brushes, uh, or like this. Um, but I don't like, I always try to keep my brushes uh, with the hair down so the paint is not going inside the core, it's actually uh, going out uh, from the from the brush, okay? And we'll talk about brushes, what brushes you can use. So, uh, this is a basin, if you see there is a two compartment, one compartment with kind of rigid edge, uh, so you can, you know, um, brush your, uh, I mean, clean your brush, just rub against this uh, rigid, you know, uh, bottom, uh, button and bottom, and uh, just clean your brushes much easier. All right, and another, this side is, as you can see, it uh, you can put actually a brush. Let me get the brush. So you can put brush like this. Uh, of course, you have water inside, and rest like this. And you can put one brush this way. You can put another brush this way, like this and so on so you have one two three four five six brushes that you can uh, and they have notches right here uh, so it's very easy so water is actually um you can have a little bit of water so you cleaning right here cleaning right here and then another set of water um, actually you can have three sets of water this is for light color this is for dark colors i normally put it <laughs> water like this so it's covering and I just clean it. This is for uh, gouache and some, not sometimes. I'm using this for acrylic as well. So really nice, uh, really nice basin. Um, recommend 100%. Uh, when you're done, all you have to do is just put a lead and it's done, right? So it's not vaporizing and you can reuse it. I normally use it for a couple of days and then pour it, put the new water. Um, and clean it because the bottom is getting a um, segment of the uh, paint. All right, so this will be number two, cleaning the brushes. One is for plain air, going outside. One is more for studio. All right, let's jump to next. Uh, next will be uh, your, next will be your palette, right? Uh, and I'm using this palette. I have an old one. Uh, I just ordered a new one. 
So I'll keep old one in the studio here and this one for Planair. It is by few, uh, by uh, Magello. Uh, it's Korean company. Korean? Yes, made in Korea. It's Korean company, Magello. Uh, Magello, Magello, Magello. I don't know how to pronounce it right. Magello, I call it Magello. Uh, it's called Fusion 18. You can find a bunch of uh, different uh, palettes. Just find one that you uh, will be actually using. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, palettes with a lot of wells I'm using I will show you the color set that I'm using so I don't need a lot so let's pull it from the box so you can see it. Uh, so what, what I'm looking so I didn't need this anymore so what I'm looking when I'm uh, searching for the palette I'm, uh, I'm looking for a lot of uh, space for mixing uh, mixing basically space so if you open this one and this is the reason I like this one it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It's actually said in the box, 18. It's called Fusion 18. A lot. Duh. Uh, so 18 wells. So you can put 18 colors. Uh, I'm using only, what, 3, 6, 9, uh, 12, plus white, 13. So I'm going to use probably this, you know, the top ones right here. Um, I have some space, mixing space right here, two big uh, spacers, and then space over here, which is a big one, and that's not all. All you can do, this is removable, and you can have actually, if you need another space, you can have space right here, this two spacer, and then this one. So I love that, all right? That's the reason I'm buying this because they have the extra tray, uh, mixing tray or palette. But a lot of times I'm uh, actually painting like this. So basically like this, I have my colors, I have my white right here, and I will do. I'll show you how to use it. You will see it in probably next episode. Colors right here, my white right here. So I'm mixing here, I'm mixing darks right here. And this is my main big uh, palette of if I need to mix and keep going. And normally I'm wiping a lot of this. All right, so this is um, uh, Magella Fusion 18. Okay, so this is your palette, and you can basically I'm using here in the studio, and I'm using uh, when I'm going outside. Same way, I'm just set. Why I'm run, you know. I will show you next. This will be Vlad. What are you doing? This will be next episode. All right, this will be next episode. All right, so this is. This is the palette you, you're using. All right, so we got cups, we got palette. Now, let's jump on the surface, you know, where to paint. Now, there is a two options. Um, you can buy any paper and use gouache. Uh, keep in mind, this is water-based, so you, you know, what if paper is not heavy duty, it will be warping, right? And right, you're not gonna enjoy it. So I would recommend uh, it's very, it's not very expensive, but it's expensive. And I will show you, and you like, yeah, right, Vlad. This is Arches. Yes, Arches. One of the best paper on the market for uh, like watercolors. And uh, you, you can argue with me, I'm not watercolorist. So, but for the gouache, one of the best uh, canvases. Now, I, um, I use two. I use, um, uh, both of them are cold press. Um, cold press meaning you have some you know rough surface uh, warm war, uh, hot press is like a smooth surface right I don't like it I like when I put in my brush and put the strokes I see some you know spots that are like skipped like you know there's a, a wide spots uh, because it's a surface like this right and I, I'm not sure I can show you you probably can see it uh, if you can see it, probably can see it or not. I don't know. But, you know, let me switch the camera to this. Maybe you can see it right here. You probably can see the surface, right? Now, now, cold press. I recommend cold press. Now you can ha you have two options. One option is 300 pounds uh, LB, 300 right here, or 140. Um, for studies, I would recommend 140. Um, it's a little bit, you know, not that as heavy as 300. And I will show you what's the 300. 
Um, so for the, for the study work, uh, 140 is more than enough. If you want to do something, uh, paint something in the studio, or maybe even outside, plain air, but you want to frame it, yes, you can frame it. You have to choose, or you have to paint on 300. Uh, why 300? So this is basically, this is what I normally order, uh, nine by 12, um, 300 pounds, cold press, 100% cotton, pure cotton, 10 sheets. Comes like this. So when, when you open first time, it's like, what's going on? Is it black? Don't worry about it, it's not black. It is just cover. This is the back of the paint. So they protecting. So all you have to do just easily, you know, um, put your I normally put my uh, nail from a finger and start lifting up the first first layer. So what will happen when you lift it up? You will have the first sheet. This is the first sheet. All right. So let me break it. And then they have oops. It's really hard to break. It, okay. So basically like this. Just pull it. Now. Here's your white surface, here's your black. I mean, black right here. Now, this will be only the first one. Uh, the, the back will be black. The rest, rest of the paper is white. So right here, you have to put the nail again, right here, separate and lift it up and uh, you will see the white. So the only one is the black, all right? Now, let me show you this. This is the paper. This is 300. This looks like a canvas. That doesn't look like a, you know, look at this. This doesn't look like a paper. This looks like a canvas. It's a solid. So when you paint, it's not going to warp. And when you're done, all you can do, you can put it in a frame, you know, put maybe backing, back, backing board, staple it, and that's it. You're done. You don't have to put, you know, anything. Um, there are some sprays. I don't like using spray over the gouache because it actually colors are changing. So, back to paper. You know, some people told me that I'm, I'm easy going other direction than just one direction to finish what I, was, what I started talking about. True, but I don't like talking. All right, anyway, uh, 300 pounds, a very heavy duty paper, as you can see. Uh, you can use 140 pounds. That will be much, much easier to, um, and l less expensive uh, as well. Because this cost, uh, this is 40, uh, 10 sheets. I normally do a cut in half, so I have six by, uh, six by nine, and I have, you know, inch extra. So it will be my six normal, six by eight study work. If I need to do something, and I can frame it, you know, or if I can, if I want to do something bigger, I can do nine by tw nine by twelve. Uh, and I actually, have another one is uh, eleven by fourteen. You can you can get even twelve by sixteen if you want to paint whole painting with gouache or cut it in half, in half, or you know half and half. I like this because it's more convenient. I can I can keep it with me uh, when I'm traveling. I want to do final painting like you know, body of work, or I want to do study work, the rule doesn't matter, I just put the tape, do two studies, maybe another study, so uh, 300 pounds is more for final, 144 study work, okay? So this is the paper. Now, next one is the tape, because you will need to have a tape to tape um, your paper on the canvas. You can take any canvases, like cheap, and the cheapest make sure it's just sturdy. Uh, something like this, uh, I just painted uh, with a neutral gray color. I use this for when I'm taping my canvases for oil. I do the same thing when I paint on you know, paper, when I paint gouache. So just take the canvas and uh, tape it, and you can put this on your uh, easel and paint the same way, all right? So what tape to use when you're taping? For paper, you know, for oil, my oil uh, canvases, I'm using just um, masking tape, something like this, just masking tape. Um, it's not gonna damage, you know, the canvas where I'm taping my uh, linen uh, and 
it's not gonna tape you know, I mean damage the linen because it's just you know because it's oil based now paper a little bit different so I recommend this uh, this is pro tape it's called pro artist tape uh, pH neutral printable repositionable removes cleanly and whatever uh, it's a three quarter 60 yards uh, wide uh, they have uh, half inch they have small one even I think quarter inch they have full inch they have inch and half and I think even two inches I'm using three quarter this is more than enough I could, actually you can see right there um, uh, taped uh, my linen on a canvas and I'm using this because this will be acrylic acrylic painting uh, but for gouache I 100% recommend this okay so this is as I said pro uh, pro artist uh, I think I bought this one from Blick I think I don't remember all right so tape to tape your paper on any canvases you want I'm using this oh, a lot of times I'm using my gator board just you know take neutral gray spray it and then you can cut bigger you know, smaller whatever you want and just use it in your standard easel planar easel all right so this uh, now all that's moved to main point is and main point is the um, uh, brushes and the paint so paint let me switch my camera so this is actually the set uh, of my gouache and as you can see I'm using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 but it's actually not 13 because this is white and this is white I'm just you know so basically I'm using only 12 colors uh, this is I'm using this small just in case if I'm going in and I don't want to take this one but lately I just find, figure out that I'm constantly taking the big big two now the brand that I'm using I'm using uh, Holbein you can use Winston Newton there is a bunch of uh, even Lucas has a gouache I um, did my research I tried you know went to actual store and open the tube and smell it and because I remember from my use how gouache smells I'm not sure why uh, I was doing by smell <laughs> I have no idea uh, but um, basically um, you want to see the intensity of the color and well, maybe even the reviews uh, everybody's saying Holbein Holbein gouache one of the best and I will tell you Holbein gouache is the best all right very rich uh, the, the viscosity is awesome it's like a butter uh, mix mixing uh, values are or not values uh, mixing uh, properties are probably the best and so on and so on and so on the company who is making it who's making Holbein made in Japan go figure right yeah Holbein Japanese, Japanese company why I was thinking Korean I'm not sure yeah it's made in Japan so um, the colors that I'm using the first one is ultramarine blue and I think I'm using ultramarine blue deep so as you can see it's 15 mils uh, you don't need to use a lot uh, you will squeeze it into your palette and I will show you how to do it uh, make sure there's no bubbles inside and you will use it for like it's not oil that you have to grab like you know paint and pasta no, this is gouache so 15 mil is more than enough so first one is ultramarine blue the next one is my um, cobalt cobalt blue and what is that what I like they have actual number G 563 or on the back right here as you can see there's a number 51 um, so this is ultramarine not ultramarine this is cobalt blue uh, beautiful cobalt blue the next one is I know I'm really really I, I'm you know I love blue colors and I, I'm actually thinking about maybe I will add another blue colors so my third blue color is a turquoise uh, uh, blue and it's a number OX I'm not sure what it's what's a number OX I've never seen OX number OX all right so turquoise uh, blue if I'm pronouncing it right 
Now, next one will be uh, number 61. It's uh, Lizard and Crimson, of course, for darkest, you know, ultramarine and Lizard and Crimson, darkest uh, paint you can mix. You can add actually a little bit of radiant, this will be as dark as you can, you can go. Uh, so Lizard and Crimson is next. Um, next one will be Flame Red, and it's truly flame. Uh, just, you take it a bit and it's just, whoo. Uh, so it's number 50, uh, flame red, and I have all these numbers and you know in the description. Next one will be cadmium yellow orange, orange color. Uh, next two are actually uh, uh, my green colors. I like to mix my greens. You know sometimes just instead of mixing, you know just jump grab it and if you know this will this is what you want all right so next will be um uh cadmium green deep uh number uh, number 90 and after that i have uh, another green that i um it's kind of my um uh color that i'm using on in oil and that's a, that's the reason i actually got it uh it's really really if you can see, it's really, really like ah, very like used. <laughs> but you can take this and mix it. And it's actually making a really nice. First of all, the moderating colors you can you know uh, take if you need to moderate your reds, do it down. This is the perfect for you know doing this. So it's permanent green light. Uh, another one is my two yellows. One is. Uh, this is Holbein uh, Naples Yellow Italian number 71. This is my yellow. So instead of using like cat yellow, I'm using Naples yellow. Uh, this is more warm color. As you can see, it's a really warm. We'll see how warm it is. Um, maybe I will get just cat yellow. Uh, deep maybe. And then lemon yellow is my cold uh, yellow. Uh, lemon yellow is lemon yellow, right? Number 21. And then I have one color for gouache. It's a must have. It's a gray color. It's, this is actually gray number two. Uh, number 71 as well. 71. I thought that was, we had 71 already. Uh, I have to check. Uh, maybe 71 is nothing. Yeah, 71 and 71. So what's going on? Maybe those numbers are not representing colors. I don't know. I have to figure figure out. But anyway, the gray color. Uh, number uh, this is must have on the gouache because a lot of times you're going through gray gray colors to whatever you need, right? So if you need to make something, um, uh, let's say the weather is like you know rainy and you don't want to use like blue and pure blues, but you want to enter through the gray and then push it toward whatever tonality you want to have. And hue, not tonality, but hue. Um, so gray is really, really good um, moderator, or I call it through color. So you're going through the gray to whatever color you want, especially in gouache. All right, so gray, and finally, uh, our white. Um, the white is a permanent white, um, G796 or whatever. Um, so this is permanent white. So this small 15 mils and this is 60 mils. You're using a lot. With gouache you're using a lot. Um, a lot of white. Okay. So this is our white. So basically this, our, this is our set right here. As you can see 12 colors. These are the colors that we're going to put on our palette. And um, you know in directions we want so this is all about equipment and the last point is what brushes to use i would recommend um something like very soft i have a you know you can see i have a lot of brushes uh you can use something like this this is rosemary and brushes series 303 by the way if you go to my website and click on uh art sale uh and the in the menu you will see brushes click on the brushes and every time you purchase brushes from rosemary uh, they actually contacted me uh, uh, and uh, we set up affiliation so every time you purchase uh, brushes um, uh, we'll get five percent they will cut five percent um, back kickback which we can apply to uh, helping ukraine so if you want to buy brushes please use 
uh, this affiliation link on my side. So the brushes for uh, gouache, something very soft. Um, a lot of people asking me if, uh, not a lot of people, but some, some people ask me about gouache, what brush to use. Can we use uh, acrylic brushes? Yes, absolutely. You can use acrylic brushes. No problem. You can use even this, um, something like um, master uh, brushes like this. Uh, this is for oil. I'm using this for my gouache and it's absolutely fine. I'll sometimes leave you know, strokes of heavy uh, hair, uh, but um, I would recommend even this. Uh, this is by Princeton and it calls Stroke. Uh, very soft for acrylic, um, covering a lot. I have actually three, I have this, uh, this, and this, the small so the set of three. And of course you need something like um, uh, maybe, you know, Angler like this. Uh, this is by, uh, actually it's by Artist Love, um, cheap one as will work. Anything soft, uh, synthetic soft um, brushes will work. Um, not ivory. Ivory is, I mean, you can do it even in ivory, uh, like, you know, um, uh, ivory, um, rosemarine brushes, rosemarine company, ivory. Uh, but I would recommend something like, I'm using a lot of this, you'll be laughing at me, but uh, this is artist loved. <laughs> you can get probably like $3, 10 of these brushes. And they work perfectly, you know, this is round, perfectly fine. Like you can do like scrubbing and a lot. It's just easy to use. Um, so just a soft, um, synthetic soft brush for, for acrylic or for gouache. Uh, I wouldn't use for watercolor, brushes for watercolor because it's too soft. Something step back um, by, you know, hardness of the brush. And that's it, just any. Um, of course, I recommend using Rosemary and Company brushes, not because I have affiliation with them, but because it's just the best brushes, right? They're just best brushes. Uh, so that's it. So we cover the containers, the brush cleaners, the palette, the paper, the tape, um, actual colors. You can use from colors, you can use Holbein, it's a little bit more expensive than Winsor Newton by probably a couple dollars. You can use something cheaper, but always don't go cheap, go uh, more uh, professional because you will enjoy using you know, you know, equipment that a lot of professionals are using. All right, so this will be episode number one. I don't wanna do cut really, really long video. Um, we already have you know two versions of this. Uh, so next episode will be how to, uh, why to use gouache. We kind of cover it, but we'll talk about it a little bit more. And of course, how to use gouache on paper, how to tape it, how to actually work with hot gouache, uh, not lifting the colors, you know, what's first, what's second. Is it light first and dark uh, at the end like watercolor or it's dark like oil, darks first and then we're going to the, to the light. It's a mix. Uh, so there is some procedure, you know, gouache procedure, how to paint gouache, all right? So look for episode number two, two how to use or how to paint in gouache. This episode was the just equipment of gouache. Uh, easel, I didn't cover the easel um, because basically you can use any easel, uh, like oil easel, or make sure that you can, instead of you know if having easel like this for oil, because oil is heavy, it's not running. The, this is running because it's a water base, so make sure you can do it like this. So you can have at least like 20 degree angle so you can paint with gouache, all right? Uh, so I'm basically, I'm using um, my, I have three easels that I'm using actually for, for, the, for the gouache, but right now I'm, I'm working on my Ugo, uh, U.Go easel to, you know, because it's actually, you can do it like this, or you can open completely 180 degree. Uh, and I love it um, for, for this. So I'm adapting it for my gouache and in for, for oil as well. So easel is not a problem. Just make sure you have, you know, you can till it to like you know 20 30 degree uh, angle that's it and you can put your palette on one side and uh, your uh, canvas with a paper on another side that's all all right and of course i will show how to do it
All right, so thank you for watching this episode. Uh, don't forget, we supporting, still supporting Ukraine. The war is keep going. Uh, we're praying for Ukraine. We're supporting Ukraine. We're sending money to uh, help your refugees and people who are actually staying inside. Uh, Kyiv is getting a little bit easier right now and much better. But the uh, south of uh, east, east side and southeast uh, of Ukraine is still uh, on, under heavy bombing and rockets and everything else. So, we are still supporting and I pre uh, I'm asking um, you to keep going, please, uh, because we need all your support. We're already getting some families in our church. I know there is a um, hundred, I think, um, the, uh, our administration allowed hundred refugees to come uh, in the United States. So we'll be working and helping them to, you know, come here. And, uh, and I, I can assure you that the Ukrainian people will give positive, uh, um, you know, impact to for you know in, inside the United States. I I I I cannot guarantee, but I I'm positive. All right. So thank you for watching this episode. Uh, watch for next one if you want to learn how to use gouache. All right. If you have any questions, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, by the way, don't forget to click on like. I just learned from YouTube that those likes are actually works better because it will go. You know will be placing this video on you know in front of m more people i guess so so click on like subscribe if you're new uh, if you already subscribed thank you thank you very much for uh watching videos staying with us uh great community i'm getting a lot of uh emails and texts that uh the reason why you know we have we communicate not only here but communicate after the video after episodes and uh, that's great so that's that's the reason i started this channel just not to show myself and what i do but have a community of people same you know same, same interest all right so stay tuned and i will see you as you know next time